welcome wonderfully to see all of your lovely, lovely faces. You say, how can she see me? I feel your spirit. We are all divine. We are all spirit. We are all connected to the universe. And that's what we're trying to um, develop when we come here as spiritual beings, an understanding of who and what we are. And as an African descended woman, as a black woman, I want to understand who am I? What is that divinity that is within me that will help me to be the best I can possibly be? That's our subtopic. Understanding the, the divinity of the black woman. And on my journey through life, I have found and understood that more and more. My name is Cynthia Marie Williams. Cynthia Marie Williams. Understanding who I am spiritually. Singing the praises of the sacredness of the great black mother. Many of you by now understand that in a literal, physiological sense, historical sense, we all come from Mother Africa. Wow. When I heard that, I'm like, I am the mother of all that is created on this earth? Boy, that made me feel so proud. I am the source of the light that is expressed through the world. Through my body, through my creative process as a mother, God, higher power, universal creatress, creator, has used my body, the essence of who I am from Africa, to bring forth light, life unto the world. I'm humbled and grateful by that. This program was created to give an understanding and to help in the development of the African descendant woman, the black woman's divinity. I believe that we must understand who and what we are in order to have a more creative, happier, harmonious life. I've been so blessed in developing and understanding coming into this world. Let me say this to you, knowing from whence I came, but to work, make it through this world on this spiritual journey. And as I've gone along this way, I've met others who have understood it. And one of the questions I asked as I got educated through the school systems is why is it that they don't talk about this? When I was a little girl, my family used to say I was peculiar because I would always question as a child uh, who and what I am. I, don't you understand? People don't die. I told my grandmother one day, she said, girl, don't be talking like that. I said, but people don't die. And the experiences that I had, being born the way I was, but the world was not willing and unable to accept that in me. So I was born with gifts. They say they call it the uh, being born with the veil. I was born with a veil. I could see, know, just being connected to who I was spiritually. And for many of you out there who have been born, who have the gifts, not only in this area, but in other areas, it is a struggle. But you must be true to that identity, that spiritual self as it manifests. Some of us are musicians, some of us are painters. Well, whatever it is that we can do, but we must believe spiritually we can do it. So I say to you, black woman, I say to you, the greatness of who and what you are, I want you to learn and I want you to understand. I met a wonderful, wonderful gentleman as I processed through this. And being called out because I meditate and I pray, and I, I will and I do have classes on meditation and prayer. When I meditate and listen to the creative inner voice, 
the spirit. And I was told to go and do something in order to be out here in the world doing my spiritual counseling and my spiritual teaching. I am a metaphysician. I've studied, went before the board to get my license as a spiritual teacher and counselor, a metaphysician, but moved beyond that to the level of knowing. So I wanted to share that and I did some flyers and went and posted them. And on that journey of posting the flyers, putting, making myself available to the community, I met a young man. And there was a vibration. In fact, his name is Omari L. Miles. That was, that was a wonderful experience. He had a flyer that he was posting. And just let me share with you what was on the flyer. This was last year. And it's part of the title that he's allowed me to use in regards to our divinity. Singing the praises of the great black mama, the divine architect of humanity. Ooh, when I saw that, I mean, I got, as they say, the vapors. <laughs> wow, here is a black man who understands the divinity of who and what we are. African ascendant woman. He says on the flyer, she who knows not her own story knows neither who she is or where she's being led. To know your history is to know your greatness and to have control of your own destiny. I'd like to introduce you to this wonderful and I use the traditional term, man of God, but man of the universe, spiritual king. I've got to put it there because wow. let, let me tell you, he's a prince. He's a king. He's, he's an expression of the male gender of who and what we are from the universe. Brother Omari Miles L. Brother Omari, I'm so grateful and thankful for your being here. The pleasure and honor is mine, good sister. Thank you. Brother Omari, would you tell us something about yourself and what you feel is your purpose in regards to this information, please? It would be a pleasure. Well, basically, I'm a native Detroiter, born and raised. I uh, just recently um, been back and forth to Chicago planning to relocate here. Um, I had the great honor and pleasure of traveling with a gentleman I met back in 87 by the name of Dr. Ben. Uh, I was in search of knowledge and truth at that time myself, and I think that was one of the most powerful crossroads I'll ever come across. Uh, I met him through some other uh, gentlemen that I was had befriended. The end result was I began to travel with these gentlemen, Dr. Ben, back and forth to Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan. And the effects of the information and the knowledge has been phenomenal. The result of the traveling, studying under the tutelage of Dr. Ben has been the culmination of several lectures that I now present. Um, my favorite topic, which is sacredness, sacredness of the black woman. I actually titled that Sacredness of the Black Woman. God was and is a black woman. But due to the unfamiliarity of the divinity of the black woman in, in her own self, it was a little hard for her to accept that particular title. So I basically had to remove the goddess beast and just deal with the fact of her sacredness and what I find amazing is in my travels on this journey um, I've met many a Caucasian female group who understands wholeheartedly they more so than my own sisters about who the great mother is they have many of organizations where they practice annual celebrations or rituals whatever you want to call them in regards to this great black mother there are thousands of books written about ancient goddesses and the origin of basically all our modern day religions being founded based on a matriarch as opposed to a patriarch. But again, she's unfamiliar with this knowledge of herself. And um, I made a commitment a long time ago with the help of the creator that I would like to be one of those who help to bring truth wherever I find it to the community 
because I think in this day and age that truth is the most rarest commodity in our community. And according to the good book, it says, you know, our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, for knowledge they reject. And I think the greatest knowledge that one can ever have is the knowledge of self. That's the ultimate knowledge, according to a lot of the ancient scriptures. Even in the Bible, the term was in there. I think back in 56 is when it began to be removed. Know thyself. And this, this actual title was on most of the ancient temples of our ancestors. And most of these temples were founded on the principles of the woman. I, I really, really appreciate that because that had been my motivation. Coming into the world, knowing who and what I was spiritually, mm -hmm. um, it had been a, it's been a lonely road in the sense that being so connected to the universe and knowing what I know, and one of the things I remember was before I was born. And I thought everybody knew <coughs> before exactly. they were born. Exactly. So when I was a little girl, as I said before previously, they just started talking about me. The adults said I was peculiar and Cynthia doesn't know what she's talking about. I was born in the South and you would have thought that, you know, but let's say it was a lot of superstitions. Mm -hmm. And, and they really made me feel bad about this a gift and ability that I had. And it was only when I became older in my early 20s that the universe connected me with some black women from, and we had moved to Chicago, and I'm like 20, 21, and I just felt so bad. And, and God, through another woman, said, baby, you need to find somewhere to go because I was just so def so so out of it, right. and I started going Some to the West Side. To yeah, she, this woman referred me to a Reverend Bell, a woman who was a um, headed a little prayer band, a little prayer group of five women. This is like 1972, mm -hmm. and when I went over, they they said, "Baby, it's nothing wrong with you. You were born with a veil." I said, oh, "I felt so relieved because the pressure," and that's why I said we must care for our children and pay attention. Because children are much closer to the universe and have that, that knowledge. And so they said, no, baby, there's nothing wrong with you. You were born with a veil. God gave you a <laughs> gift. Now, these women were, and I, I don't want to disrespect them, but they were not highly educated women. They were from the earth of Mississippi and Alabama, I'm telling you. Mm. Now, it, God gave me intellect. I had already been to college at 16. But these women helped me to understand that part of myself that was from the universe. But I want to say to you women, that we as African descendant women brought this over with us from Africa, these, these talents, these skills. In my research, Brother Omari, just like you said, I found that women in the African society predating Christianity and Islam, mm -hmm. John, Professor John Mabiti wrote articles about women and their roles as counselors, mm -hmm. whether you want to use the word medium or seer mm -hmm. or prophetess, and they were respected. Oracles, even in oracles, the Bible. Oracles, yes. The Bible yes. says that man will once again t return to the oracle. Thank you. To be properly informed. I mean, it's Thank in you. there. Well, I, you know, I love the matrix when you talk <laughs> about that because everybody's like, ooh. That's right. But see, I, those brothers really got to that essence and so when I say this, I say to you, as I grew and developed after being with those women who helped to validate my gifts, talents, and abilities, who, who through their own strong spiritual natures and awareness and gifts said, you're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. But my mission and the service I had to do was to be helpful. And so it was a struggle. Let me tell you, it's a struggle to, to move through. So I came in in the spirit, in the human form as an African descendant woman and I, I prayed and meditated. I said, well if I'm here well, I mean I am here, what am I to do? And I am to uplift as you said, I am to uplift the African descendant people. Mm -hmm. But as I grew and developed as a woman, I saw as those women who mentored me passed and left this world 
which mother passed about six years ago. She was 93. Mm -hmm. That group of women no longer exists in our society. And as African descendant people, we have become more traditional, more conservative, more religious in our concept and have lost the essence of that spirituality. Absolutely. So I'm here with this program to say to you, women, African descendant women, mothers, remember, be knowledgeable of who and what you are. You are divine. You are special. To lift up, Brother Omar, as you are doing and as I am doing, those of us in this place at this time, the recognition that you are the great mother of the universe. Did you want to make another comment, Brother Omar? Well, the, the unfortunate thing, getting back to the veil piece, first mm -hmm. of all, um, there's a, a, one of the oldest religious texts known on the planet, the uh, Book of Coming Forth by Day and by Night, um, mentions of lifting the veil of Isis, and it says no mortal man has ever lifted the veil. You say that, you know, the ancestors say we're born with veils. I like to think for children such as yourself, you're born with the veil lifted, because mm -hmm. in ancient uh, scripture, when we're talking about the veil, the spiritual person is the one who's lifted the veil and gone, looks, can see beyond the physical body. And then that's why I like to put it the way it was before, as opposed to being born with a veil over you, you were born with the veil lifted, mm -hmm. which actually meant you had that spiritual eye to see past the physical realm. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the, the misfortune. But on the, on the other aspect of that is that the, the divinity of the black woman is exposed to her 24 7 but the fact that she is she has no knowledge of it she's not been taught her historical presence throughout the planet it always goes over her head such as the movie Catwoman with uh, Holly Berry we have no clue the average woman when I, as you watch the movie uh, with Holly Berry Catwoman yeah mm -hmm. do you understand who that movie is about it's about an ancient Egyptian goddess called Bass the cat-headed mm -hmm. goddess you know, even when we were kids and watching the cartoon or Batman, Catwoman was in there. They've always found ways to put these ancient black goddesses in our face, but we're totally unfamiliar because we know not a history of self. So when they present movies, even a movie called um, The Fifth Element. The yes, fifth element yes, in yes. relationship to fire, water, air, earth, the fifth element, which, which would be uh, what they call the ethers. But according to a ancient Egyptian uh, mythology, the goddess I just mentioned, Bass, who Holly Berry played, is also called the fifth element. And of course, that movie took place where? In Egypt. And the movie was basically centered around the destruction of humanity, and this woman was sent from the heavens to save mankind. They called her Lilo. And Lilo was playing the role of the goddess Bass, an African goddess. That is so beautiful, and I'm so grateful <coughs> to you for having this kind of knowledge. Black woman, I say to you, you are divine. I'll keep repeating it to you. I am divine, and you are too. And that doesn't take away from the expression of our partner, the male. It enhances who we are once we know who we are, because there's beauty in that. It, it, it breaks through all of this outward pressure, this mental, emotional pressure, psychological pressure we have being in this country at this time. You have the freedom now. We've been blessed. The universe has, has blessed us with a president who expresses who we are. And we have a great opportunity to take that and say, let me do some self-reflection. The universe has brought forth a man and a woman and a family that represents us. Let's not shy away from it. Let's lift it up and say, well, what does this mean to me? And look at that and say, you know what? All things are possible. And I say to you, great black mother of the universe, I don't care if you're 25, if you can hear and understand at the right level, 15, you are great. You are divine. You are connected to the universe. Oh, 
holy and yes, divine. Yes, Omari. Holy and divine, according holy to the ancient scriptures. Holy and divine. Absolutely. Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> Don't say there aren't men out here in our culture that do not understand and respect because there are, they are here. But one of the things, light draws light. So you, in order to meet and to be and meet and to be around people like this, develop that within yourself. And yes, we have ways of helping you to do that. I have an email address that you can <coughs> contact me, Cynthia Marie Williams. You can contact me at my email if you want further understanding, if you want to attend uh, a seminar or workshop with me in particular then we can get together and I can go through this process of helping you to understand who you are. By my own experience and my own knowledge, Brother Omari, you have uh, contact information. I do believe that you're going to be um, having an event uh, this May in regards to the Divine yeah. Black Mother. Yeah, we're looking at uh, putting on another program, uh, Sacredness of the Black Woman, mm -hmm. um, at the uh, auditorium and IIT around May. Um, we haven't actually scheduled a date yet, mm -hmm. but um, within the next couple of weeks, I think we'll have a date set because I have some other things also that I'm doing around the country, other lectures, so I have a person who's setting my schedule up for me. So, And you do have uh, detailed information. Could you share that with us? Uh, yeah, well, um, I can be reached at... Um, the address over at IIT, uh, Letter from Home Foundation, 3424 uh, South State Street, um, Chicago, Illinois, 60616, Suite 3C7-2. That's the office at IIT. Yeah. Letter from Home Foundation is where I can be reached. There's also a number, 708-651-1999. Uh, Would you repeat that again, the number? 708-651-1999. And it's showing on the screen so that anyone that would like to contact Brother Omari L. for this event that will be occurring May. And want to understand more about the history and the spirituality of who and what you are. Just as African people, yes, we're, we're specifying women because that, that is the eat for myself particularly. But Brother Omari, as he said, he's done other things. What were some of the other topics that you've uh, also covered? Well, um, I, I have uh, a series of lectures that I've developed over the years in my travels with the uh, Dr. Ben and the Craft, uh, along with Sacredness of the Black Woman. There is Secret Science of the Bible, which is the metaphysical science hidden in the Bible, identical to the same metaphysical teachings that our ancestors taught in ancient, ancient Egypt. Um, as I tell folks all the time, you know, we, have, we are under the impression that there are a multitude of religions. They're just religions given in different cultures and different tongues. The Bible, the Quran, the Torah are all the same book. We do not understand that because we are taught to only focus on the religious belief or indoctrination that we've been presented with. But I've had the opportunity to pretty much study every book out there that uh, I've been aware of or as a religious text. For the Bible, um, Jesus is the Christ. For the Quran, Muhammad is the Christ. For the Torah, Moses is the Christ. For the, um, um, trying to get a, a couple of the other texts out, but we have Buddha, Krishna, and they all have the almost identical story. I was amazed after spending uh, studying Islam in West Africa, I was in Senegal for about a year and a half, and I found that not only did I find the connections to the ancient Egyptian culture, but I also found out that Muhammad over there, the story was he had ascended to seven heaven, and at a point in time as the Mahdi. The Mahdi is the Arab term for Christ or Savior. So I, I, as I begin to study it, from the uh, Eastern perspective, um, I found out that there were things over here that were slightly different. But over there, it was the parallels between Christ and uh, Muhammad were almost identical, as with Krishna, all the way back to the Egyptian story dealing with Isis, Horus, and Osiris. These are all the same story that's being retranslated and passed down. And the most important thing about these stories, I think, is is the fact that the mother has been taken out of and that's the biggest problem with western religion without stepping on any toes but 
the feminine aspect of these ancient religions have all been ignored and left out. You know, most women have never even heard of the Queen of Heaven, who they make cakes and ale for in the Bible. But she's in the Bible, she's in the Quran. You know, and again, that's the sad problem is when humanity change, when humanity's mother change. In other words, the saying is when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. And being that the black woman is the foundation of all humanity on the planet, and we have enough books written by enough European scholars who've all validated that, and that if we did have an, uh, what we call a Garden of Eden, it had to begin with a woman. Because we know today without any issues that the oldest woman on the planet, the oldest person on the planet was a woman. They called her Deck Mesh. Uh, they named her Lucy. The scholars named her Lucy in relationship to a song that was out at the time by the Beatles. And this is a woman whose bones were found in a gorge in uh, Ethiopia, the Oduwa Gorge. And she's go back to almost 3.2 million years. And the reality of the fact is there was not one, but there were many bones of ancient women found around the world. And because we're not the most scholarly group right now, we're just not into uh, history the way we should be. But again, that's, that's the foundation of a people. And when the people do not have the foundation of self, they do not have a foundation. I can appreciate that from you, Brother Omari, because in my travels, again, as I studied and I was placed in places where I gained knowledge, mm -hmm. and one of those places was in, in High Park around the University of Chicago. I became aware in the 80s. I worked at the American Theological Library Association. Never heard of it before. <laughs> but the universe put me there. Absolutely. This was one of the, if not the only one, and I remember it was the only one. There was another somewhere else. The only theological library in the country. Mm -hmm. To work at the American Theological Library was one of the two places, the creme de la creme places to work. And those guys that worked there, those young people that worked there were getting their Ph.D. in theology from the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I became aware there because that knowledge is in the high academic arena. Absolutely. And that's why I learned about John Mabiti, Professor John Mabiti, an African scholar. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned about who and what I am as a woman that is divine. So I look forward to having more shows and you being a guest on the show. I look pleasure. forward to people contacting you because <laughs> I tell you, black woman and black man, you can gain a lot of knowledge about who we are. And if you want to contact me, contact me through the email and I can actually show you. I am a prophetess. I am a medium, a spiritual healer, born with the gift. Let's not be afraid of it.